What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I made my way down to Maserati Lotus Greenville and we're going to take a look at the all new 2020 Lotus Evora GT. Huge shout out to them for providing this vehicle for me today. I will have all their contact info down in the description below. This one is finished off in Monaco white. It has an MSRP just over $102,000. And also don't forget for January, we are giving away a GoPro. More details will be later in this video. Starting off in the back, this is a mid-engine sports car. It runs off a Toyota Source 3.5 liter V6 with the addition of an Edelbrock supercharger that produces 8.7 PSI. And this is paired to either a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic. This engine puts out about 416 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 370 17 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. That's about 16 more horsepower and 10 more pound-feet of torque than the previous engine. It is rear-wheel drive, of course, weighs in around 3,100 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in around four seconds, depending on the manual or the automatic. It has a top speed of 188 miles an hour, and with a fuel capacity of 14 and a half gallons, you can expect to see 17 miles per gallon in the city and 25 out on the highway. The overall wheelbase measures 101.4 inches. It has an overall length of 173. The width is 73 and the height is 48.1 inches. Starting up front on the 2020 Evora GT, there are a lot of changes over the previous model. We're gonna start off with the LED daytime running lights. They are nicely integrated into the top section of the air inlets on each side, which brings me to the next functional piece. All of these cutouts down in the lower section of the grill will help provide maximum cooling to the front mounted radiators, which is obviously a key with a mid-engine vehicle. Down in the center here, we have the blacked out chin spoiler, just gives it a very nice look against the white. And then as we make our way up to the headlights, they still have the same design. The turn signal is up front, the back section has been blacked out. And then this little portion right here actually pops up and washes the headlights. So if you need to use that, you have the option to do it. We have the Lotus badge right in the center. Both of the heat extraction vents in the center of the clamshell here are still retained from the previous model. And then right in the middle, we can open up that compartment. It just reveals your brake fluid and windshield washer fluid, so you can easily replace those. And then on both sides of the clamshell, those vents are new. They are functional as well. So I would assume that airflow can go through the bumper and around the tire and back out of those just to help provide better aerodynamics. Moving to the side of the 2020 Evora GT, we'll start out with the staggered set of wheels. These are the optional diamond cut black forged wheels. They have a 10 spoke design to them, measure 19 inches in the front and 20 inches in the rear. They are wrapped in a Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tire. And then as you can tell with the cross drilled ventilated rotors, they measure 14.2 inches up front and 13.8 inches in the rear. Also the calipers have been painted red as well. As we make our way up to the side mirrors, they are gloss black, they're power folding and feature the integrated turn signal. You can also see the Evora GT badge just behind the front tires. And new for the 2020 model, the front quarter panel here actually kind of ducks in a little bit, showing you a little bit of the front tire. So adds to the characteristics of the side, gives it a really nice look. As we make our way up to the roof, you can get the optional carbon fiber roof. This one does not have that. It's finished off in gloss black, along with the A-pillars, which gives it a really nice line. Moving behind the doors, there's another air inlet, so this will provide even more cooling to the engine. And then as you can tell, down on the lower side skirt, it is finished off in black, and they've added this black piece right here, just in front of the back tire. And finishing off in the rear on the 2020 Evora GT, we'll start out with the spoiler here. It almost has a three-piece design to it with body-colored sections on both sides gloss black right in the middle along with the third brake light. This spoiler will help produce 160 pounds of downforce for this vehicle. As we move below that, you'll see the circular taillights with Lotus spelled out in the middle. Very nice contours in the middle section of the bumper with the Evora GT badge right in the center. This does have a backup camera with four parking sensors. The lower diffuser is finished off in carbon fiber, has a really nice design to it. And then as you can tell down in the lower section, there's very aggressive slats running throughout the entire bottom section. We have the single exit sports exhaust right in the middle of that. And then new for 2020 as well on both sides. You'll see cutouts here with more carbon fiber and a view of the rear tire. Very nice to see that. It's gonna help provide better aerodynamics for the vehicle and just gives it a really cool look being able to see the tire from the back. As we make our way up to the rear deck lid here, you'll see even more heat extraction vents around the engine. You'll also see it on the top section here. So this vehicle has a lot of cutouts and functional air vents to provide maximum cooling and better airflow. So 
that is going to finish up with the exterior walk around on the 2020 Evora GT. Comment down below. What do you think of the latest flagship model from Lotus? This is the most powerful Evora to date, and I think it looks really good. I love the white, I love all the black accents. Let's go ahead and check out the interior now. As you can hopefully see, the side mirrors are folded in. They automatically do that when the vehicle is locked. You have the lock button right in the center, which is the Lotus emblem. Just underneath that, if we double tap that, it will automatically unlock. And then the back button here, or the bottom button here, will open up the hatch. But now with it unlocked, let's go ahead and hop inside. Starting off on the door panel for the Avora GT, it's covered in leather and Alcantara. Very nice design. You can see the leather on the top with a gloss black release handle. There's leather and stitching on the armrest. And then Alcantara inserts surround pretty much everything else. It's on the grab handle too. Down below there's a little bit of storage space in the lower section of the door along with the fuel cap release and rear trunk release. And then this also features an Alpine sound system. You can see there's one speaker in the front section of the door. So moving into the driver's seat now of the GT, let's start out with these seats. They have a combination of leather and Alcantara along with the red and silver stitching carried on from the door panel. Looks very nice. You can see the red inserts as well. The Lotus badge is up in the headrest with GT in the middle section of the seat. And these are pretty aggressive as far as the bolsters go. There's very nice bolstering around the thighs and then around my sides and up by my shoulders. But moving on to the steering wheel now, I think my favorite thing about this is the sides are solid leather. You have Alcantara on the top and the bottom. I've seen other vehicles where the Alcantara is on the sides, so I really like the fact that the leather is on both sides. And then for the controls on the steering wheel, it's basically for your cruise control. You can set it on one side and adjust the speed on the other. Moving to the left side of the steering wheel, you'll see the side mirror adjustments along with the headlight controls and a dimmer switch for the gauges. There's one air vent along with the engine start button. You can see more of the stitching just below that. As we make our way up to the dashboard here, you'll see carbon fiber on the center gauge cluster along with two air vents in the center. As we make our way back to the gauges here, you'll see the tack on the left side along with your miles per hour on the right side. You have a clock and odometer and outside temperature off and to the right. And then your PSI and fuel gauge is on the left side. This does have heated seats, so you have those controls for driver and passenger on the outside. We have sport and race mode along with your hazards. You can lock and unlock the vehicle with this button. And then this does have the active exhaust, so you can turn that on and off from there. And then just below that is the seven inch Alpine screen. You can see there's the radio, you have Bluetooth, you can hook up your phone. You have a camera that you can go into, so you can see the backup camera and then go back to menu. You have your phone when that is paired. So it's very easy to go through the screen. We also have the navigation as well. So we can pull that up and get a view of that. You have a star button right in the center, basically brings you to your favorites, and then you can scroll through the radio right here. So everything is very easy to use. Moving down below that, we have all the climate controls. You have the fan speed down at the bottom with your temperature right in the center, and then where you'd like the air to go is just above that with a few other buttons around them. So it gives it a good layout. You can see more of that stitching and leather running along both sides. And then this does have the six speed manual. So it's very easy to go through these gears. Reverse is all the way up and to the left. It will automatically bring up the backup camera and you can see the guidelines as well. Behind that, we have the manual parking brake finished off in leather with more of the stitching. And then between the seats there's a cup holder with a little bit of storage space and a 12 volt as we make our way over to the glove box you have all the room you need there for everything that needs to go in the glove box you can see this is hand built in england by this person right here so they have the badge off and to the right side more of that alcantara and stitching covers the entire dash there gives it a really nice look and then we'll go ahead and take one last look at these seats they are super comfortable i love the design of them and then up top you have a couple garage door buttons and the rear view mirror now it's time to show you guys the back seats. Yes, there are back seats in this car. It is considered a two plus two. You can have those deleted and just have the front two seats. But let's go ahead and show you the storage space behind the front seats. Before I get to that, I just wanted to point out the door sill is completely finished off in carbon fiber. And then the backrests on these seats, if I just pull on this leather latch here, are completely finished off in carbon fiber as well. So they are very light seats, have a nice design to them, along with these cutouts here, which you can see. So once in the back, if you're new to the channel, I owned a 2010 Lotus Evora, and honestly, this was the best interior storage space I had for the car. I never had anybody in the back seats, uh, but they are here. I'm 5'10", as you can tell, I am up against the roof line here, uh, so if you needed to use them in a pinch, you could. 
If you had small kids, they could easily fit back here. The seats do have red stitching on them. You can see that running across and they have leather in the center. They're not really intended for people, but it is nice to have this storage space for groceries or backpacks, clothes, anything like that. And last up, we're gonna take a look at the trunk space. There is some room behind the engine, which is cool to see. I'm just gonna double tap on the key fob button that will automatically release it. You can use the button inside on the door panel if you'd like to. But here is the space that you get. There's actually a pretty good amount of room. I can fit all my camera equipment back here. There's some room off and to the right side along with on the left side so you can put some items sideways. So while it's not a ton of room, you do have the option to use it along with the storage space behind the seats. So now hopping in the 2020 Lotus Evora GT. Since the car has been sitting, well, I've been reviewing it here. You have to tap the unlock button twice to disarm the immobilizer. We can insert the key off into the side here. And then with the clutch pushed in, go to the engine start button. Hear that V6 come to life. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into sport mode and then put the exhaust to the active exhaust or turn that on. But right off the bat, this is a super comfortable car to drive. I feel like I'm hunkered down in a go-kart. It's a very lightweight car, very easy to drive too. I love how lightweight the shifter feels and the aluminum knob on the shifter has a really good size to it. So it's really easy to go through the gears here. seating position. These seats are super comfortable and aggressive. I can feel them on the back sides of my shoulders here. And then the steering wheel, these notches in it just give you a really good grip. So this is definitely a fun car that you can take out on some back mountain roads or even the track. We'll go ahead and give it a little bit of gas here. Woo. Definitely a quick car. Downshift's really good. Taking this turn here. Woo. And it handles those turns like that. I mean, it is direct exactly where you want it to go as soon as you turn that steering wheel. We'll rev match there. Downshift again to second. It's not all that loud from the inside. I'm in still in sport mode right now, but it gets up to speed just like that. Not even thinking about it, nothing crazy. I'm not even going half throttle, uh, but it's, it's a quick car. It's really fun to drive so far. But let's go ahead and move on to the overall visibility. In a mid-engine car, usually the visibility is not the best. In the Evora, it's really not all that bad. I like how I can actually see out of that back glass. It is functional. I can see straight up over the spoiler, so it's cool to see the top portion of that. Just gives it a really cool look. Uh, obviously, you have your side mirrors that are gonna help do a great job as well. And then over your left and right shoulders, kind of where there's a little blind spot, but right here I can easily see behind that back glass and the side glass. So the back seats have side glass on them so you can use those for better visibility, which obviously is really good and helpful. So visibility, it's not all that bad. When you're driving a vehicle like this, you're not sacrificing too much as far as visibility, but it's something that you get used to. When I daily drove my 2010, it, it just became normal to me. It's something that you get used to. But moving on to the inside, there's definitely been a lot of refinements and additions to this car with all of the leather and the Alcantara everywhere, all of the stitching. It's even on the steering wheel. You have a nice red stripe here. I really like the interior, especially when you add the carbon fiber on top of the gauge cluster there. Everything just feels super nice. I really like it. You even have it up on the headliner too. It's down the A-pillars as well. Uh, so definitely gives it a really nice look. It's above these buttons in the middle as well. While it kind of feels tight in here, it's like you're in a go-kart, especially having these seats hug you on both sides. Uh, it feels like it's tight on the inside, but it's very open at the same time. All the glass really gives you a lot of light on the inside. The windshield is very nice, even though it kind of has a low roof line. Visibility, as I mentioned earlier, very easy to see out of the front. But it, while it's very close, you're close to the passenger here, you actually have a decent amount of room. And I could easily put the seat farther back if I needed to. So anyone taller than me would be able to fit in here just fine. As far as driving this car, just putting a couple miles on it so far, they're really fun to drive. I'm just cruising normal right now, 
just going through some back roads here. And as far as being a daily driver, which I drove mine every single day, it was my only car. They're fun to drive. It's not too loud on the inside, so it's a comfortable daily driver getting this out on the highway, going through these gears again. Very easy to do, that clutch pedal is light, so you're not going to get sore or a tired left leg if you are driving this every single day. Taking these bumps, it's absorbing them well. I'm still in sport mode, so that when you put it into race mode, it will take traction control off. I'm just gonna leave it in sport mode for now with the exhaust. I'm just gonna mess with that a little bit as we rev match these downshifts here. That definitely sounds good. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive in the 2020 Lotus Evora GT. Once again, huge shout out to Maserati Lotus Greenville for providing this vehicle for me today. Definitely check out their website. That will be in the description below. Also, don't forget, for the month of January, we are giving away a GoPro. All you have to do to be eligible to win is be a subscriber to the channel and comment on videos. We're gonna pick the video with the most comments at the end of January and pick a random winner from that video. So all you have to do is comment on videos for your chance to win and be a subscriber. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.